Here we go. We finally have Ultimate General American Revolution. Now, one thing I found in just testing the game real quick to learn the mechanics a little bit uh, is that it doesn't play well with my screen capture software, my OBS. Uh, I've been playing with the settings for the last couple of hours trying to figure out something that would work. So what I've decided is that for the best gameplay experience for you guys, you're not going to see my face in this one. So as we dive into this campaign, I'll, uh, I'll turn off the the face cam and we'll just watch the game unfold um you can't get it on steam they've said that it won't be available on steam till sometime in 2024 but you can't get it on their website and i'll put a link in the description if you want to be able to buy the game it is now available in early access i am excited to dive into this campaign looks fantastic from the preview videos that i've seen but gonna be a steep learning curve uh, i know there's a lot to learn uh, so the first time playing through, don't expect me to be an expert on this. We're going to learn together. Uh, first time playing through something like this, you're learning how the game works, and then there's a thousand things you wish you could have done differently in your decision-making as it unfolds. So we'll learn together, and we'll see how it goes. Every person is born to do something great. Every okay. They have a choice to take a step closer to their destination or to run away. So we're going to have some decisions to make here early on. Um, no, I'm not George Washington. It helps if I could type, though. As the eldest child, I took on much of the responsibility for my younger brothers and sisters. All right, so it looks like we're going to have, um, let's see, intelligence... Increases general line of sight radius, boosts unit range attack damage. That's not bad. Boosts range attack efficiency with perception, endurance, unit efficiency and condition, charisma is melee attack damage. All right, so. Seems like I want to go with what's going to get the most bang for our buck here, which would be this one perception and willpower. At the age of 11. My father. Yeah, this is totally the story of George Washington. Lost his father at an early age, growing up on a plantation. Spotting range, 25%. Command aura, 20%. Um, yeah, I like the command aura. I spent my adolescence studying and managing the family's plantation. Oh, yeah, this is definitely Washington. His older brother, Lawrence, died. So now what are we going to lose here? 10 endurance. That's a lot. Um, we'll do this one. At the age of 20, I was appointed commander of the Virginia militia. Yeah, and then I started a war. Organizational talents. Tensions over control of the Ohio River Valley eventually sparked the French and Indian War. I was able to apply my skilled management to help prepare my troops. Uh, willpower, stamina, firearms. Hmm. I like firearms. We fought well, capturing several French forts, and in spite of some setbacks, we succeeded in driving out the French. My attempts to secure a commission in the army were thwarted by English officers with little respect for my abilities, so I decided to resign. My next steps were... See, this is all stuff that we'll probably get into the game and wish we had made different decisions, but so it goes. Um, additional starting funds of 10,000, that's not bad. I like that. Afterwards, I ran for and was elected to the Virginia House of Burgesses. In 1774, I was elected as a delegate to the First Continental Congress in Philadelphia. There I helped secure. Um... Additional muskets. Tensions with England have reached a breaking point. In the near future, a confrontation will break out, and I will have to use all my experience to fight for the independence of the colony. All right. So I think we'll go with normal difficulty for the first time through. Pick a different image here. I like that one. So we've got pretty good perception. Charisma is not great, so may we'll have to avoid melee damage at first 
All right, I hired two regiments, one from Pennsylvania and one from Virginia, to support the Patriot cause. I traveled to Massachusetts with the two regiments, eager to join the fight against the British. So um, let's just take a look at the map. Uh, it looks like we're just dealing with New England to start, which is pretty historical. Uh, it was very much confined to New England on you know that kind of that side uh, of things uh, to start. So uh, let's see. We've got a standard map mode. We've got control map mode that's going to show us who controls what. I don't know what determines control. We'll figure that out. Loyalty. C. Uh, mining resources. And supply network. Okay. Up here we've got finances. We've got market, army expenses, fleet expenses, intelligence expenses, civil expenses. Uh, you can increase income by expanding your territorial control, raising taxes, selling items with two S's, protecting sea trade routes. Uh, materials report. You can increase materials by expanding your control, building proper facilities and settlements. Population. Um, number of officers refers to currently available high rank officers for HQ department or regiment command assignment. So we need a certain number of officers in order to be able to command more regiments, I guess. Uh, looks like right now we can only have a size of up to five units. And then there's the fleet. Most of these things are locked. It looks like we have to establish departments in order to unlock those things, which we haven't done yet. So right now we've got just our two regiments here, uh, about a 1,000 men. I guess we could start marching them toward Boston. It's the 18th of April, so we haven't had the actual fighting break out yet. Maybe we'll go toward Providence. There's some Brits there. I love the map. It looks really cool. There's only 240 men in Providence. Let's go hit them. Uh, something's happening. I think we're going to get Lexington and Concord here. Yep. Uh, so I could help them defend and gain 10 reputation or just say, uh, let it go without me. Um, now we're going to help them defend for sure. All right, so the Battle of Concord, this is where the Americans first kind of offer resistance in a substantial way. Um, yeah, we've got to hold on to the weapons stash. And this is a situation where historically um, just guys kept arriving. So we just got to kind of hang on early on. I think we'll pull everybody back now and we'll dig in around the weapons stash. I actually did a video on vlogging through history about Lexington and Concord today, not knowing that this game was going to be available. So it was kind of fortuitous that that happened. Ended up with something like three or 4,000 militia on hand by the time all was said and done, which meant they vastly outnumbered the British. So it looks like we've got, let's see, the Medford Minutemen. These are non-professionals, so they're low efficiency, the Concord Militia. Um, the Minutemen are more effective than the Militia, is basically what they're saying here. But either way, we just got to kind of hang on for dear life while more arrive. And more are arriving. Excellent. So we'll just have to keep pouring these guys in as they get here and hope for the best. We're obviously not going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the British in any meaningful way. And more keep arriving. I think this is going to be the story of our lives here for this battle. Small numbers, but small numbers eventually add up to big numbers when you get enough of them. Here's the first fire happening. Get a little closer, regulars. Get a little closer. Yeah, he's got a lot more coming this way, too. Uh, fog of war means I'm not necessarily seeing it all. So they have more coming. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring these 175... Arlington Militia in behind, I think. 
we'll try to keep kind of a small pocket of resistance as much as we can. He's definitely trying to outflank me, though. I don't want to get too far out in front. Here he comes. we got to remember, uh, melee is not our friend. Especially because I'm guessing we don't have bayonets, and they probably do. Let's get up here so we can get on their flanks a little bit. He's definitely trying to outflank us. I'm going to send the 175 up here. No, don't fall back. You got to stay in your fortifications. What little protection you have. Can we make these guys run? Double quick. I mean, I know we're going to have a lot more coming. But most of these units are going to be... Oh, here he comes. He's going to get me with the melee. That's going to hurt. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Oh, yeah. Here's some nice numbers coming in. We'll just start rushing them to the front, and then we'll worry about where they're going to line up after they get closer. Oh, we actually drove him back. He sent 200 men in on, at me there. Prosperity Dearborn. I love these names. Prosperity Dearborn has been wounded. All right, boys, let's get them up there. I think the only thing helping me out here is the fact that we're in these strong defensive positions. But we're not going to be able to hang on too long in the center without help. But so far, so good. Looks like we're inflicting more casualties than we're taking, which is really all we can ask for for militia against regulars. We'll go ahead and speed things up a little bit here. We're almost even in terms of numbers on the field now. Which we're still going to need to do better than that against the British. Here come more. I just need to keep talking about the numbers because then more guys show up. But here come his reinforcements, Percy. So historically, um, once he, once the uh, the British that had advanced on Lexington and Concord knew that they were in a difficult situation, he did call for reinforcements. And uh, Lord Percy was the guy who comes to reinforce them, which is probably the only thing that saves the British from having to surrender in Lexington after they had fallen back from Concord. I'm actually going to send these guys up in behind here. All right, here we go. So we're going to pull what's left of the Medford Minutemen out. Oh, boy. Here they go with their melee again, but this time we're out in the open, so you can see it's not going so well for us the melee combat in the open. We have to avoid that at all costs, at least till we get some better melee abilities. Alright, let's pull these guys out. Put them in. We got oh yeah, here we go. Two fifty. Excellent. Send them over here. Another 250 coming up over here. That's good news. Just got to hang on for about 45 more minutes or so. We'll dig in with these fresh units.
We'll send these 82 up into this spot right here. Oh, yeah. Now we're talking. What do we got? Like a thousand coming in? Now we've got a huge advantage in numbers. Yeah, if this is another 250, and it is, that's another thousand total. Give me control of them. They're not all on yet, so I can't control that last one. There we go. All right, let's send them in here. Now we can roll up his flank, hopefully. All right, we got to get these guys up here, pull these 18 back. I'm just going to send the 250 straight in. First Lieutenant Abel Polk was killed. Rest in peace, Lieutenant. Did your duty. All right, now we're going to try to overwhelm these guys. If we get really lucky, maybe we can capture a unit or two. And it looks like they're going to pull back before we get the chance to do that. All right, boys. Let's hit them. Oh, he's charging into my center. That's all right. We're going to overwhelm him on this side. Philo Godfrey was killed. Just going to overwhelm him with numbers now. Let's get these guys back up in here. Push forward over here. Our guys are exhausted. They're not used to fighting this kind of battle. 18th foot has shattered. Oh, and somehow the Lincoln Militia decided to go Leroy Jenkins and just charge right in. So we're going to have to get in there and help them. I don't know what these buttons here are for. Oh, that's just the hold button. So if we hit C, that gives us a charge. I feel like even with our weak abilities in melee, we can do 500 versus 80. Okay. Don't fire into the backs of your own men, please. All right, you know what? Charge. Too exhausted to charge, I guess. Oh, the fourth foot surrendered. Let's pull them back so they don't get unsurrendered. Charge! See if we can't capture another British unit here. Yes, 10th foot surrendered. Let's get them out of there. If nothing else, it'll get us some guns. He's still hanging on, though. With a few units here and there. Alright, we routed them. Charge! Charge. 18th foot surrendered. Excellent. Let's 
get them. Oh, I moved the wrong unit. I pulled my unit back instead of the one that surrendered. He's still got five units that are fighting, though. Well, we know how to fix that. Beautiful. 23rd foot. All right, we can finish the mission now. Let's do it. And the fifth foot surrendered as well. All right, so casualties about the same on each side, uh, even though we outnumbered him almost three to one. But remember, this is militia against British regulars, so that's kind of how that's going to go. Um, but okay, now let's see what happens. So we've been given the task of capturing Providence. We'll get a 10 reputation boost. There's only 240 British there at the moment. Uh, so let's head straight there and take that before he can start sending troops down from Boston to make our lives a little more miserable. So I think we can actually click and fight the battle on screen if we want, or we can just allow it to kind of simulate on the campaign map here, which is what I think we'll do in this case, at least for now. Although at some point this may take too long and I might want to just do it this way. Because he does not seem to want to leave there. So I've been named Commander-in-Chief of the Continental Army. So hopefully that means, okay, so we've got headquarters has now been unlocked. So we can do research now. Uh, quartermaster Department, Engineering Department. Ah, oh boy. I think we'll go with Quartermaster first. It's only going to take a week to get that. There are some British troops down in Newport, so I'm a little worried about that. You know what? This is taking forever, and I'm about ready to just get on there and fight the battle myself. That's the best kind of battle, the ones you don't even have to fight. It automatically went to victory as soon as I got onto the battle map, so I guess we did enough to drive them out. All right, so now we can march into Providence. The British uh, fell back to Newport to their units there. Looks like we have some stuff we can do in Hartford now. You can build proper buildings and settlement to increase loyalty's weekly boost. Excellent. All right. Providence is being captured. I guess, will that give us control of Rhode Island? Is that how it works? Is you have to hold the capital? I guess we'll find out. Excellent. We captured Providence. Now we'll see what happens next. So I think once we get into the next day, it'll... Yep, there we go. Massachusetts Patriots have formed a militia unit. Uh, they are eager to fight under your command. There's that 10 reputation bonus. So I guess we'll probably keep getting missions. And that's probably the closest we're likely to get to, like, a um, tutorial for this. Where are we at on our... So here's our army management. Uh, headquarters, we got four days till we get the quartermaster department. Once we get these departments, chief of intelligence, artillery chief, quartermaster chief, chief engineer, and chief of the Navy. Okay, so new mission is to start uh, construct a recruiting house. The British did move some troops down here into Middleborough, so we've got to be careful there. Um, we've still got two days left on the quartermaster department. And I don't think we can construct a recruiting house until we have the, uh, the proper research taken care of. I'm a little nervous about these 1,000 British troops there. I've got 450 in Leicester, 900 in Providence. You can now organize a quartermaster department for an advancing support of your army. So let's pause. Now we can look at colony management. So 
we can pick doctrine and development. Um, not entirely sure how all that works yet, but let's take a look. Instruction doctrine will boost this colony with faster construction times. Um, okay. So now we're able to actually buy some decent weapons, but rather than these just civilian muskets that we have so far. Um, it's going to cost us, but we definitely are going to need them. So can we buy 2,000 brown besses? It's going to cost us a decent amount of our finances that we have. Actually, 200 are going to cost a lot. So we're not going to be able to buy a ton of guns like that, for sure. But I feel like uh, we're just going to have to hang on for dear life for the first little while here. Engineering department's next. We can assign a chief quartermaster. Looks like Jay Richardson's going to be the best option there. Um, do we want to pay for forage or loot provisions? Yeah, we'll pay for forage for sure. We don't need to be turning the populace against us this soon. Oh, awesome. We can recruit militia regiments now. Uh, let's see. We need to pick a commander. We've only got two available. Samson Byrne looks like the better option. So it looks like we can add multiple units to it. So that's pretty cool. Let's get some artillery in there. They're only three pounders, but it's better than nothing. Excellent. All right, can we recruit more than one? Because I feel like we need another one, too. I think we only have one more commander, so that's going to be all we're able to do at the moment. Get a little artillery with that one, too. Do we have the brown besses yet? No, we don't. All right, so that'll give us some new militia regiments. I'm going to have to probably wait for them to get recruited because right now they're both at just 80 men there we go once we got to the new day not enough guns so what are we waiting on we waiting on the artillery or something probably all right we're gonna bring those two out though to providence because we're gonna need them leave the garrison head to providence same here, leave the garrison, head to Providence. So we're starting to get more militia units that are showing up. I feel like we might be reaching the time to try and make a move on Newport before he can try and join up with these units in Middleborough. So I'm going to start sending them over. I'm going to send these guys here. Actually, it looks like are those. Looks like there's some British troops up here. Maybe we need to deal with them first. We'll pull these guys out from Leicester. And then we're going to pull, pull our army out here. Oh boy. Not quite yet. So I'm going to pull these ones out. I'm going to put Noel, who's got a smaller force, in as the garrison at Providence. Oh, we got to capture Boston. That'll take some time. Oh, what's happening here? Oh, I can't control any of these guys because I don't... Um... Oh, those were American militia units that were up there. Because I don't have, like, line of sight or command radius for that. All right, what do we got here? Oh, this is a winnable battle for us. Let's do it. Well, the odds are looking pretty good for us here in terms of the numbers. I don't see where he is so far. We must not be close enough to actually be able to determine that. So we'll march slowly and deliberately. Oh, he's coming out to us. Okay. All right, we got to pull these guns back. I'm not not thrilled with that. Or we just leave the guns where they are and we bring the men up.
Oh, just like that. He said, no thanks, we're out. Can't win this one. Beautiful. That's the way to go. Oh, some dropped equipment supplies here. That's cool. Uh, let's go ahead and take Newport. Where did his men go? They better not be marching on Hartford. So that is a British unit right there. I'm going to send Solomon back over there to help out. We'll take Newport, and then we can march them back north again because our flanks are pretty well covered at that point. Um, Burn, let's grab these supplies. Oh, he's got two units there. How do we pick those up? Oh, I guess we just have to hover over it with a unit until they get picked up. Same thing with Newport being captured. Excellent. All right, let's send Burn and my general back up. I don't think we have the ability to recruit anybody new because we don't have any commanders. Nope. Definitely got to help those guys out, though. All right, how's our research coming along? Let's go to headquarters. Two days for engineering department. Oh, we're picking up some supplies here now, too. Can we control Pike now? Ah, oh, Patriots from New Jersey offer ammo. Excellent. Newport was captured, which gets us our first ship. That's some good news right there. I think we'll just keep it right where it is, though. There is naval combat in this game as well, I believe. I might send my general over here so we can take command of this fight and really stick it to the British here. Oh, there's a British ship coming in already. Angered me so much that I whistled when I talked. All right, there we go. Now we can take control of this battle. It's not overwhelming odds. He's got 650 men. We've got about 1,000, but I still feel like those are odds we can take. All right, we're coming in from three sides here, and uh, it appears the British are in the center, though we really don't know for sure what's going on here. But there's definitely something going on here, and we don't have a lot of men over that way, so we need to try and converge our forces as quickly as possible. Oh, he's got some over here too, so looks like he's marching in both directions at us. Oh, he's actually coming this way with most of his army. So let's head over to help out as quickly as we can. Oh, he's going to come at me with melee, of course. Because that's like my worst nightmare. All right, we need these guys to double-quick it. And I need to get my general over there to help out. Ugh. Oh, we routed one of them. That's some good news. Wasn't expecting that. Now, if we can route the other one, maybe we got a chance here. Turn and face them. Ah, there go one of ours now. That is not a good start. Hopefully they recover. He's just got one unit over here to hold me off. It's good tactics on his part though, I'll say that. One of our officers was wounded. All right, we routed them two of our units have been routed hopefully they'll recover but in the meantime let's try and win this ah Stay with me, boys. Stay with me. All 
Oh, he's gonna charge into me, is he? All right, these guys are gonna recover now, so that'll help. All right, turn and face them. All right, I think we're in good shape. Uh-oh, his guys have recovered now too. That could end up being a problem for us. Let's get this full force put together in some kind of a semblance of an army. A lot of dead right there in the center. Right, we got to get these guys up. Really kind of two distinct battlefields at the moment on either side. But I think we got them. I'm feeling pretty good about our chances right now. It's so what we have to do. We have to just try and take advantage as take advantage of opportunities where we can get a manpower advantage, which will be few and far between. But that's what we have to do, where we can isolate elements of the British Army. You can see the numbers are not favorable for us as far as killed versus deaths. But it's a victory, and we'll take it. Now we have an engineering department, so let's go ahead and take a look at our headquarters again. Uh, artillery and officer recruitment. I feel like officer recruitment is the priority right now because we don't have enough officers for the number of regiments that we'd like to have. Let me pause for a second here. Construction management. We need to co uh, construct a recruiting house in Hartford. So let's make that a priority right now. There it is right there. So we'll get working on that. Um, we still do not have any new officers available to us, though. But we... Did a number on those British units there, so that's good. Let's move back up toward Leicester, I think, there. Construct a production building. Production infrastructure in Hartford. So I'm taking a look at the other options we have here. So here's the market. Um... We do have our brown besses now, so that's good. But there's only 200 of them, which is why I can't really outfit anybody with them because we don't have enough for any of our units. We do have a naval naval battle going on here that doesn't look like I can control. There are some men in Leicester that are trying to capture the city or the town. Let's head up there and see if we can't do something about that. He's about to capture it, but we'll take it right back. Looks like there's some dropped equipment and supplies we can grab there. Or there were. They're gone now. He's actually falling back out of the, out of the town. So we'll take it back here. Let's get Dunbar pulled back. Uh, five days on officer recruitment. Let's look at colonies management. Let's focus New Hampshire on production. Connecticut will do the same.
He's just going to continually have reinforcements coming in, though, I'm afraid. So we're going to have to just keep working on that the best we can. All right, so what just happened? Uh, production infrastructure, yeah. As soon as we get our officer recruitment, uh, then it looks like, oh, we can assign projects to our uh, to these guys here. So I don't have any officers available to make a chief engineer. What could, oh, wow, look at all this. Holy cow. This is intense. I'm really, really impressed by the depth to this game. It's really going to be a lot of fun to play and figure out how it all works. Uh, research, speed, new product, wagons, uh, regional warehouses, horse pastures. Dang, there's so much here. But I guess we got to start with this one, right? Right there. So Quartermaster Command will take 47 days. We have no officers available to make a chief engineer at the moment. Uh, we've got projects that are available here that we'll have to wait until we get officer recruitment done. So let's go ahead and do that before we wrap this episode up. There's like little privateers and stuff that are fighting the British all over the place. I love it. The Second Continental Congress, they want to know what I need more of. Um, weapons to form more units. If they're not just muskets, then sure. But they're civilian muskets. I don't really need more of those. But, um, yeah, I guess we'll take them. Better than nothing. All right, next project. We got intelligence department, uh, refill copper, or artillery department. I'm going to go with intelligence next, I think. Um, now we've got a new officer. We can make him the chief engineer, at least for now. He's not ideal for that post, but we don't have anybody else. So, uh, Additional production points may be leased from small businesses. Uh, so that's going to cost, but let's definitely do that. I don't know if that's 150, like how often that is. I guess we'll find out. We can assign them a project. We'll start with Engineers of the Revolution. So a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot to kind of deal with and manage. And I can see how vitally important the decisions I make now might be down the road. So um, we're going to come back and we're going to keep this going. I, I do have more Ultimate General Civil War that's already been recorded and is ready to go. But I wanted to get this to you first. So we will get back to that as well very soon. Thanks for watching and we'll see you again soon.